Crow Doll, James and the Giant Peach. Chapter 1 Until he was four years old, James Henry Crocker had a had 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 an unhappy life. He lived peacefully with his mother and father in a beautiful house beside the sea. There were always plenty of other children for him to play with, and there were and there was a sandy beach for him to run about on, and the ocean to paddle in. It was perfect little perfect life for a small boy. Then one day, James's mother and father went to London to do some shopping, and there a, and there a terrible thing happened. Both of them suddenly got eaten up in full daylight, mind on and on a crowd powder speed by an arrow and by an er enormous angry dinosaur had which had escaped from London Zoo. Now, this, as you well imagine, was a rather nasty experiment for two such little gentle parents. But in the long run, it was far nastier for James, James than it was for them. Their troubles were all over in a Jeffrey. They were dead and gone, and in 35 seconds flat, poultry flat. Poor James, and on the, on the other hand, he was still very much alive, and all at once he found himself alone and frightened in a vast, unfriendly world. The lovely house by the seaside has, ha, had to be sold immediately, and the little boy carrying nothing but a small suitcase containing a pair of pajamas and a toothbrush was sent away to live with his two aunts. Their names was Aunt Spongy and Aunt Spiker, and I am sorry to say that they were both very horrible people. They were selfish and lazy and cruel, and right from the beginning, they started beating poor dreams for almost no reason at all. They never called him by his real names, but always referred to him as you disgusting little beast, or you filthy nonsense, or you miserable creature, and they certainly never gave him any to blue to play with or any play or any picnic or any pictures book to look at. His room was as bare a uh, bare his room was as bare as a per prison cell. They lived on Sponge on Spiker and now dreams as well. In a queer ram ram ramshackle house on the top of a high hill in the south in Bart. The hill was so high that for almost anywhere in the garden, James could look down and see from for miles and miles across a marvelous landscape of woods and filled with and fields and a very clear day if he looked in the right direction. He could see a tiny gray, gray dot far, far away the horizon, which was the house that he used to live in with his beloved mother and father. And just beyond that, he could see the in the ocean itself, a long thin streak of black, black, blackish blue, like a light line of ink, beneath the rim of the sky. But James was never allowed to go out, to go, to go down off the top of that hill. Neither on Sponge or on Spiker could could ever be bothered to take him out herself. Not even for a small walk or a picnic, and he certainly was a permit to go alone. The nasty little beast will get only into a mischief if it goes out the garden, and Spiker said. And the terrible punishments were promised to him, such as being locked up the cellar with rats for a week, if he were even so much he dared to climb over the fence. The garden which covered the whole top of the hill was a large and desolated and the only tree at the entire place, apart from a clump and a dirty old lemon bushes at the far end. was an ancient peach tree that said that never gave any peaches. 
There was no swing, no seesaw, no sand pits, no other children were never invited to come up the hill to play with pigeons. They weren't so much along a dog or a cat to keep him company. And as time to went on, he became sadder and sadder and more and more lonely. And he used to spend hours of every day standing at the bottom of the garden, gazing wistfully at the lovely forbidden words of woods and fields and oceans that were spread out to belong him with a magic carpet.